Good morning and welcome to the start of this week for this time of prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger for ever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made, he remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass. We flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old, and endures for ever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children. On those who keep his covenant, and remember, his commandments to do them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And as we look around, we can see that the night has passed, and that this day lies open before us. So let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. In Psalm 89 I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established yourself, your faithfulness in heaven itself. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord, your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? In the council of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround him. Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty and your faithfulness surrounds you. You roll over the surging sea. When its waves mount up, you still them. You crushed Rahab like one of the slain. With your strong arm, you scattered your enemies. The heavens are yours, and yours also the earth. You founded the world and all that is in it. You created the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon sing for joy at your name. Your arm is endowed with power. Your hand is strong, your right hand exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They celebrate your righteousness, for you are their glory and strength, and by your favour you exalt our horn. Indeed, our shield belongs to the Lord our King to the Holy One of Israel. Once you spoke in a vision. To your faithful people you said, I have bestowed strength on a warrior. I have raised up a young man from among the people. I have found David, my servant. With my sacred oil I have anointed him. My hand will sustain him. Surely my arm will strengthen him. The enemy will not get the better of him. The wicked will not oppose him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down his adversaries. My faithful love will be with him, 
and though my name through my name his horn will be exalted i will set his hand over the sea his right hand over the rivers he will call out to me you are my father my god the rock my savior and i will appoint him to be my firstborn the most exalted of the kings of the earth i will maintain my love to him forever and my covenant with him will never fail i will establish his line forever his throne as long as the heavens endure if his sons forsake my law and do not follow my statutes if they violate my decrees and fail to keep my commands i will punish their sin with the rod their iniquity with flogging but i will not take my love from him nor will i ever betray my faithfulness i will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered once for all i have sworn by my holiness and i will not lie to david that his line will continue forever and his righteousness is thrown endure before me like the sun it will be established forever like the moon the faithful witness in the sky but you have rejected you have spurned you have been very angry with your anointed one you have renounced the covenant with your servant and have defiled his crown in the dust you have broken through all his walls and reduced his strongholds to ruins all who pass by have plundered him he has become the scorn of his neighbors you have exalted the right hand of his foes you've made all his enemies rejoice indeed you have turned back the edge of his sword and have not supported him in battle you have put an end to his splendor and cast his throne to the ground you have cut short the days of his youth you have covered him with a mantle of shame how long lord will you hide yourself forever how long will your wrath burn like fire remember how fleeting is my life what futility you have created all humanity who can live and not see death or who can escape the power of the grave lord where is your former great love which in your faithfulness you swore to david remember lord how your servant has been mocked how i bear in my heart the taunts of all the nations the taunts with which your enemies lord have mocked with which they have mocked every step of your anointed one. Praise be to the Lord for ever and ever. Amen. And Acts chapter 10, continuing from verse 23. The next day, Peter started out with them and some of the believers from Joppa went, went along. The following day, he arrived in Caesarea Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or, with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, Three days ago I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. 
You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptised with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Well, let's turn to prayer. And Heavenly Father, we uh, think about that psalm, how your uh, great promises stand firm, and yet for your anointed one were fulfilled through suffering. And we hear that uh, explained through Peter's testimony uh, to Cornelius that Jesus Christ himself went through suffering before being raised from the dead and we thank you that in him all your promises stand firm forever and so we pray Lord um, in line with uh, what we looked at a few few weeks ago in Romans uh, we thank you that we uh, are adopted in him and share in his inheritance uh, through suffering unto glory and we pray that we may remain faithful with you to the end. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Heavenly Father, as we've uh, in the occasional talks been considering Daniel and that very clear message from those early chapters that it is you alone who are sovereign over all the kingdoms of the world. However mighty anyone looks, uh, you are able to bring them down and raise up another man in their place at any time. And so we do pray for the rulers of the world, conscious uh, that um, they're coming very much back into our news again uh, with um, uh, President Trump, um, Putin and uh, the President of China and uh, what they're up to, beginning to fill our newspapers again also the goings on between Britain and Europe. Lord, we thank you that even as uh, these men in these various places uh, often wield apparently great power, yet before you they are just a breath of the wind, dust on the scales, and you can uh, take them down just as quickly as you can raise up new leaders in their place. So we pray for each of them that they will discharge um, their responsibilities in a God-fearing way. Rather than shaking their fist at you and at the world, they may humble themselves before you and seek the Lord Jesus Christ for his name's sake. Amen. And we do want to thank you once again for our uh, time together to worship you um, on the Sunday. Uh, we thank you for the marker that is for many people in their weeks, a time to step aside from the busyness of the world, to sing your praises, to come before your word, uh, to pray for the needs of the world. We thank you for the encouragement that is to so many of us 
and thank you for the willingness there's been of people to be involved in uh, getting these services together and making them available to uh, a wide constituency. And we continue to pray that uh, just as in those early days of Acts, so now, you will be adding to those who are being saved daily and building your church in this place and across the world. And Heavenly Father, as uh, school holidays um, officially begin now uh, for much of Leicestershire and next week for the rest of the country, we do pray for the whole tourist industry, um, often uh, using lots of uh, very temporary and insecure uh, workers. We pray for the, their role within the economy. Uh, we pray for those who are fearful um, for their jobs. Lord, you created Adam in the garden to work it. Uh, work, productive work, was always part of your good purposes for us as we live in your world. And we pray um, that you will be with those who are struggling to find work at this time and open up new possibilities for them. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And we pray for ourselves that we may faithfully walk with you this day, wherever you have put us, that we may bear witness to the Lord Jesus Christ and to all that he has done. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>